Hello and welcome back. Today we are talking about iPadOS 26.1, the first point release for iPadOS 26. By the time you're watching this, the release should be out or should be out very, very soon. There are some new features and UI tweaks we'll talk about in this video, but one thing we aren't going to talk about is bug fixes because at the time I'm recording this, Apple hasn't released the full release notes for 26.1, so we don't know what bug fixes are in this release. The point one release is generally when Apple starts pushing people towards the new OS. So I would expect a fair amount of bug fixes in this release. I'll update the written version, which will be linked in the description with that information. Anecdotally, I've been spending a lot of time with the release candidate build on my iPad Air, and I've been really happy with how it's been performing. So I think this release is gonna address a lot of the issues people had with the initial release. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into it. The slide over is back but it's not exactly the same slide over we had before in iPadOS 18. In some ways it's better, and in some ways it is unfortunately worse. To use slide over, you need to be in either the windowed apps multitasking or the stage manager multitasking mode. It does not work in full screen apps, which would make it work pretty similarly to the way it did in iPadOS 18. Now that kind of sucks, but obviously Apple is trying to keep this full screen apps mode as simple as possible which means getting rid of pretty much all the multitasking. So to start, I have Safari and settings open. And say I want to move settings into slide over, which you couldn't do before in the old system. What I do now is tap and hold on the traffic light buttons. And there's now an option at the bottom here that says enter slide over. I tap that and the app moves into slide over. You'll notice a couple things. First of all, your slide over window is now resizable. Before you were kind of stuck in this long, narrow iPhone view, but I can make it shorter, I can make it wider, and it stays a slide over window, meaning I can slide it off to the side and slide it back on at that same size. And you'll see it docks to either the right or the left side, just like it did before. One of the downsides of this is there can only be one app in slide over at a time. If you remember before, we used to be able to have a stack of apps that lived in slide over. Now it is just one. A benefit that we never had before though is that the slide over window is always available, which means for the first time, I can actually invoke slide over from the home screen. If you remember before, you always had to have an app open to get to the slide over stack, and now you can get to it from really pretty much anywhere. Another fun thing about this version of slide over is that it supports apps that don't participate in resizing or multitasking, like, say for example, Final Cut Pro. You'll see it doesn't resize it. It locks into either a portrait or landscape iPad size. I can take that and do the same thing here. Tap and hold on the traffic light buttons, enter slide over. Now this Final Cut Pro window lives in slide over. I can pull up another app to my website and pull in Final Cut Pro in slide over if that was a thing you wanted to do. So obviously Apple had to adapt this to work with the new multitasking. And there are some benefits like being able to put any app window you want into slide over and having it always accessible. But there's some downsides, of course, like only being able to have one app in slide over. And I really miss being able to drag an app up from the dock and open it in slide over. It's also a thing you can't do. You basically have to go through the multitasking menu here to get an app in to slide over. Another improvement to the new audio controls in iPadOS 26 is now the ability to adjust the gain for a USB connected microphone. So I'll call that out because I tested this with my Shure microphone plugged directly into my audio interface and there weren't any options there, I guess. The ex expectation is you would control the gain on the interface itself. But when I plugged in my USB microphone under Thunderbolt, then I saw the option show up. So to see this in action, I'll open voice memos. So it triggers the system to know I want to record some audio. We'll go into the audio input selector and control center. I'll go ahead and select my USB-C lavalier mic. And you'll see now that there's this slider that lets me adjust the input gain for that microphone. Presumably I'd have headphones in right now to check my levels. Before you were kind of stuck with whatever the system gave you, now you have a little more control on your input levels to hopefully give you a cleaner audio recording. 
The settings for local capture, which again is the feature that lets you record your own video and or audio during a call, have moved into the settings app proper. Well, I guess they didn't really move. You can still access them through Control Center, but now they're a little easier to get to in the settings app. So if I go to general, there's now a local capture option and the settings you have here are the same. You can either change your save location or turn on the audio only option so it won't record your video. Tapping on the save location, as you might imagine, brings up a file picker. And if I want to choose a different folder, say I want to put this in my blog post folder for some reason, open that. And that's where the output of my local capture sessions will go. I'm sure you remember that fun lock screen shortcut that the iPad inherited from the iPhone, where if you swipe right to left on the lock screen, it brings up the camera. I don't know about you, but on the iPad, this is almost never something I actually want to happen. But now you can turn that off in 26.1. So if you go into settings, go down to camera, there is now an option. It is called lock screen swipe to open camera. You can just turn off and now you see we do the swipe and we get nothing, which is great. And something I'm going to leave off on probably my iPhone and iPad. You know, the iPhone Air has the camera control button, which means I can really easily get to the camera when I need to. So probably the end of this shortcut for me. The music app gains a nice new touch-based shortcut for switching songs. So from the now playing bar at the bottom here, if you swipe kind of where the track information is, if you swipe either from right to left to go forward or left to right, you can switch between the different songs in an album or playlist without using the buttons that are easily in reach there. Maybe a little more impactful on the iPhone where there's less space, but we get it here on the iPad as well, and that's really not a bad thing. Let's look at some of the small UI tweaks that have been made in 26.1 as Apple continues to refine the design language of iPadOS 26. We'll start on the home screen. I'm gonna go ahead and open this folder, and you'll notice now folder titles that used to be center aligned, they're now left aligned. Even if I were to go into the edit mode, you'll see the title itself is still left aligned. While we're in here, I guess I'll call out the Apple TV icon or the TV app icon or whatever you want to call it. If you look at that now, as part of their rebranding around Apple TV, you know, Apple TV Plus, the service is now just called Apple TV. The TV app icon now has this kind of rainbow hue around the text and the icon and the Apple logo, which is, I guess, interesting. Now let's go into settings. You'll see that some of the section headers for some of the main sections like general or accessibility or Apple intelligence are all now left aligned as well. The design team seems to be all about left alignment these days. So that applies to these sections as well. If we go into the photos app, you'll notice the scrubber for videos has a liquid glass effect on it. And last, but certainly not least, if you're someone who either doesn't care for liquid glass or you find some of the UI elements make text hard to read, Apple is throwing you a bone. So if you go into settings and display and brightness, you'll notice there's now a setting for liquid glass. Now by default, it's set to clear, which is what we've been used to since iPadOS 26 released. But now you can tap on tinted. And what that does is reduce the transparency of some of the UI elements that have maybe been a little bit hard to read. So going into the music app, of course, you'll see the now playing bar, for example, is much less transparent. Same thing if I go into podcasts. And the other place you'll see it is in notifications on the lock screen you'll see they are actually much easier to read for those who prefer that style. It doesn't apply everywhere. For example, Control Center to my eye looks much the same. So that's gonna do it for this video about what's new in iPadOS 26.1. If there are other new features that are discovered, I'll be updating the written version, which will again be linked in the description if you wanna look at that over at slatepad.org. As always, if you made it to the end of the video, Thank you, I really appreciate your time. If you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, that would help me and the channel out a bunch. And with that, I will catch you all in the next video. Thank you and take care.